Hello, I am Marcus and welcome to a new episode. So something absolutely incredible has happened today. Volkswagen has sold more ID3s in Norway than Tesla has sold Tesla Model 3s in Norway. Yes, that's true. Tesla has sold around 3,240 Model 3s in Norway and Volkswagen has sold around 3,290 ID3s. Well, what do I think about that? Well, Volkswagen only started selling the ID3 on the 11th of September and today it's the 15th of, of October. So they've sold over 3,000 cars in just over a month. Absolutely incredible. Um, and Tesla has been selling the Model 3 all year in Norway. Now, another interesting fact is in Norway, the e-tron almost has twice the number of sales this year as the Tesla Model 3. Now, I'm not here to say bad things about Tesla, but I think Norway is a look into the future for the rest of Europe. Now, obviously, Volkswagen hasn't sold more ID3s in Portugal this year than Tesla Model 3s because it's only 80-something ID3s that have been imported into Portugal. Um, and Tesla has sold much more Model 3s than 80 this year in Portugal. But I think what we have in Norway is a look into the future. So at the more higher end, you've got the e-tron, and that's outselling the Model 3. And at the lower end, you've got the ID3, and that's also outselling the Tesla Model 3. So... Um, the ID3 is a bit cheaper and the e-tron is a bit more expensive, depending on which models you go for. Um, there are models of the ID3 which are similar prices. So let's get one thing straight. 2020 has been an awful year for all car manufacturers. In one way or another, they have all suffered from COVID. So, you know, the ID3 factory has been shut for a while. The Tesla factory has been shut for a while. Everybody has suffered due to COVID. But the Tesla fanboys, they're telling us that Tesla isn't selling many in Norway compared to the ID3 or the e-tron because of um, constraints, because they're currently building the Model Y and they've got constraints in building the Model 3. I don't think that's entirely true because today I looked on the Tesla website. If I was to order a Model 3 specified to the spec I wanted, it would be delivered in November. So a month away, six weeks at most. So that doesn't seem to me like, like they've got constraints, probably more constraints due to the boat. And they've actually got stock. So if I was actually wanting to get one from existing stock, I could probably get a Tesla Model 3 this week. So to me, it doesn't seem like they've got many constraints. I think the problem is they're not getting as many orders as they could. I honestly believe this year in Norway, if they wanted to, they could have sold many more Tesla Model 3s than that. So I don't think it's down to constraint. I think it's something new that we're beginning to to see at the high end people are going for the e-tron in the Norway and at the lower end people are going for the ID3. Now why is that happening? I think it is because people like Volkswagen group products and they're very good. The ID3 is a very good car, the e-tron is a very good car and both of these offer things that the Model 3 doesn't offer European buyers. In a way I think this is a bit sad because I believe Tesla could have sold more Model 3s in Norway this year and more Model 3s mean less ICE vehicles on the road and I think it's great that the Volkswagen Group are suddenly being able to bring out EVs, e-tron and ID3 in large numbers as well as the Porsche Taycan. So these are all good things. This sort of taking sales away from ice vehicle vehicles, which is what, exactly what we want. But I definitely believe that people who were considering the Model 3 now have the option of the ID3, the e-tron, and even the Porsche Taycan. So I think Norway is a barometer for how things are going to be in Europe, definitely. I know the Tesla Berlin factories come online, and hopefully that will come online soon and quickly and hopefully it will bring down the price of the Tesla Model 3 and then the Model Y etc. I just believe Tesla's heyday within Europe for selling EVs is over and I think the new king of EVs in Europe will be with the Volkswagen Group. As I said I want Tesla to sell as many EVs in Europe as possible, I want the Volkswagen Group to do the same to get rid of ICE vehicles but I think now we're coming into a new reality and this is the game changing reality because Volkswagen is also going to bring out the ID4 very shortly, um, the INYAK and, and European buyers are going to go for this. Now I hear some Tesla fans saying that, what about the Model 2? Yes, Tesla definitely needs to bring out a Model 2 hatchback in Europe that can compete against the ID3. That's not coming out next year. Let's look at the history of Tesla. Tesla normally bring out a prototype 
at least one or two years in advance. They showed the prototype only one or two years later. Is that actually in production and in consumers' hands? So at the quickest, I believe, Tesla could bring in a Model 2 is probably 2022, more realistically, 2023. They need to do it. It will be great. It will probably sell in the bucket loads in Europe, and that's something they definitely need to do, but it's not something that's going to happen soon. So actually, the idea of this episode is I want to talk about D-Mode again. So there's been some more discussions about D-Mode, and people want to know what happens if we turn the Eco feature off. I can't remember what it's called. It's called Eco something. It's all very confusing, the ID3, I must admit. It. So here, if we click here, I don't know if you can see that, if we click on assist, and then what we do, we click on settings here, and I found it here somewhere. Eco assistance, that's what it's called. Eco assistance is turned on. So what happened in D mode, and as you can see in my other video, is that when we come up to roundabouts, junctions, speed signs, it actually uses regeneration. But when we're on an open road, it coasts. Now someone's asked, if I turn eco assistance off, does D mode still do, do that? In fact, it shouldn't because in fact, it's eco assistant in D mode that's doing that. And it works in comfort and eco mode. So we've got it in comfort mode. I've turned off eco assistance and we're going to drive in D mode. And now we're going to drive around some roundabouts. So let's reverse out of here and let's go on our trip in D mode with eco assistance turned off there's 15th century church over there if anybody's wondering I've got this I've got the GoPro stuck on my head so it really is hit and miss if this is going to look good or not hopefully it'll look good because I really don't want to do this one again so we're in D mode Eco assistance is turned off. Now we're going along here and now we can accelerate a bit. So what we need to do is look along here. Let's make it a bit bigger. What we need to do here is to see if we get a sign here telling us that a junction's coming up or if a roundabout's coming up, etc. And to see if it will actually go into regeneration. So at the moment we're in D mode. So we're coasting along at 70 kilometers an hour. Just let my foot off and we keep coasting. That's normal because there's nothing in front of us. We're going along nicely this road here. So you'll keep going. So let's go. So in a minute, now we're pulling up to 50 zone. I'm letting go, there's no regeneration. There's the 50 sign. And there's no regeneration. It's not even weak regen. It's basically no regen. So D mode without eco assistance basically doesn't regen whatsoever. So now we're coming up to a traffic light and I've left my foot off D mode. Now I wonder if it's going to slow down here or not, or regen or do anything. Let's see, I have to put my foot over the brake, I don't think it's going to do anything. No, 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 it's Muse braking. So um, probably if I'd have got closer, we'd have got front assist. Um, because I haven't disabled front assist, but in D mode, when we've got eco assistance turned off, it didn't do no regeneration whatsoever when we came up to this traffic light. So, so far, I've not seen a single sign here telling me to take my foot off the accelerator, um, warning me there's a roundabout or anything. All I see here is these traffic signs here, um, which is normal, telling me 250 and I can't overtake here, apparently, the traffic signs. So, um, I haven't seen anything yet. So, I definitely think eco assistance doesn't work on D. And it definitely seems to coast. Now there's a roundabout here. I'm going to slow down a bit slow and then speed up a bit. See if it does anything to get past the traffic. So if there's a roundabout. So I'm speeding up a little bit now, getting to 50. Now my foot's off the accelerator, coasting in D mode. Eco assistance off, coasting, 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 coasting. No warning about roundabout. Now I'm going to have to brake myself now. I'm going to have to brake myself because there's a car here. It definitely seems to me that in eco assistance mode definitely seems to me when eco assistance is turned off d mode just coasts it doesn't seem to do any regeneration whatsoever in d mode so it seems you get b mode is regeneration and d mode is no regeneration when eco assistance is off when eco assistance is on and it's smarter then you do get regeneration in D mode like I've explained in my last video. So I'm stopping here because somebody asked what happens if we turn the car off then come back into the car does 
eco assistance automatically come on so we're going to check here again and as you can see eco assistance is turned off so i'm going to get out the car now and turn it off Sim put it in park mode i don't think it should turn eco assistance off but we will see so i'm going to lock the car the car's currently locked and let's just do a 360 around my beautiful ID3. Actually, it's in the shade, I should put it in the sun. So it's locked and the engine is actually turned off. So I'm going to stick this back on my head. So I'm coming into car. You see that? Select online mode. I'm going to get this wire because. I'm going to stick this wire in the GoPro because the GoPro on my head is running out of battery because the GoPro batteries are absolutely useless the GoPro is amazing but the battery really is useless I'm going to press the assist button here assist we look at the menu setting again eco assistance as you can see eco assistance is still turned off I locked the car went out of the car I come back in the car eco assistance is still turned off that's exactly what I expected that's what somebody asked on the internet um, and still in D mode and I've chosen this road because as you can see there's not much traffic and it's a country lane so I can accelerate around the corners etc I have to go careful because obviously there could be cyclists people whatever but so much fun this car on country lines like this absolutely brilliant and i think that's what some people want that's why i got the question asked on the internet some people just want the car to coast they don't want um smart regen and i think it's just the way you set up the car so it seems that it can just do that in d mode it just coasts so you've got two modes you've got d mode coasting you've got b mode recuperation if you put in an eco assistance you get smart recuperation in d mode so now over there you can see there's a junction so i'm going to start coasting now and see what happens i'm coasting 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 there's a stop sign no regeneration no regeneration no regeneration i'm slamming on the brakes now because if i didn't um we could possibly have hit a, that scooter I won't want to do that. So it literally just coasts in D mode. I'm confirming this again. Let's go out here. I have to go. There's another roundabout. Taking my foot off the accelerator. Accelerator this car. Taking my foot off the accelerator. It's off. It's off. It's off. It's just coasting. No regeneration whatsoever. And I'm applying brakes. Otherwise, I hit someone. So this is really now just like a petrol car. There's no smart regeneration whatsoever. And we'll try it the next roundabout. Obviously, some people want this. Some people don't want smart regeneration in the ID3. I actually prefer smart generation. I think ecosystem's absolutely great, wonderful. But there's people who don't want that. So if you don't want that, it's, it's easy to turn off in the ID3. And eco assist, even when you lock the car, unlock the car, go back into the car, the setting remains. It doesn't blank out the setting again. Uh, if, I don't know if you can see over there. Those are the mountains we were in in my last episode. I'll leave a link below because that was a good episode and those mountains were real fun. So now, we're coming up to a roundabout. It's a downhill roundabout. There's no coasting, no regeneration. It's not telling us there's a roundabout. It's not telling us anything. Nothing is happening. And now I'm putting on the brakes because I don't want to hit the cars in front. Well, let's just go. What I'm going to actually do is turn eco assistance back on again. So I've turned it back on. I'm speeding up. There's a roundabout ahead. And now it's regening. It's regening. It's regening. It's in there's a roundabout ahead. I didn't touch my foot on the pedal. So this is smart regen now in D mode. So you see, you can turn it on and off at will and it just works. I hope I'm answering your questions about D mode and clearing up any confusion. Now, what I've decided to do, I'm Put the car back into eco assistance in d mode and we're going to go back to the same roundabout again to see where the difference is so this is a scientific test we're doing the same roundabout without eco assistance in d mode now we're doing the same roundabout again with eco assistance in d mode just check eco assistance is turned on again see here it's turned on Oh, it's even got some other settings active it's saying they're active stop that so i'm just going to pull back a bit here 
so we don't not slow down because of cars so now I'm going to speed up to 50 right. I'm letting my foot off now we're at 50 we're coasting down we're coasting down we're coasting now it's telling me to lift my foot off to accelerate there's a roundabout coming up can you see that roundabout symbol I'm coasting down coasting down coasting down coasting 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 it's regening 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 in D mode ecosystems turned on regening 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 at the end I just apply the brake slightly so as you can see at the same roundabout again the difference in ecosystems in D mode you get smart regen and without ecosystems in D mode where you just get coasting so i hope i've done my best to clear up any confusion around d mode to explain it as well as i can do in these past episodes so i'll leave the link to three past episodes where we talk about d mode b mode and again today we've talked about d mode thank you for watching this episode hope you've enjoyed it please click subscribe because i'm nearly at 700 subscribers and i'm really trying to give you important information about the id3 that nobody else is giving you 